Dr. Covino's three major priorities for Cal State LA are student success, engagement with the community, and collaboration. Dr. Covino. Well, good morning. This is just great. What a beautiful turnout. One of my great prides, I, you know, we English majors, the, the abbreviation is usually ENG, and it's right next to engineering. <laughs> so I feel a real affinity with this project for, for a number of reasons. Uh, I, I'm, I'm especially happy to welcome our, uh, our friends and our supporters and our partners on this project. So many of you here and here on the stage and all around have been uh, part of the team uh, that has worked so hard uh, over the years to make this a reality. It really has been a team effort. It's involved our students, our staff, our faculty, our community partners, and, and uh, our architects, our manufacturers who work so hard to get the station up and running. We're just delighted that, that we reached this point. And I want to certainly acknowledge uh, once again our, our heartfelt thanks for the the creative genius that really moved us in this direction and the family and former students of our beloved Professor James Ataro. Thank you all for being so being here today. And uh, this is really this is really a, a lasting legacy. We couldn't be prouder to uh, to see it in that light. Uh, now the uh, this is this is you know uh, this is an exciting step forward. For Cal State LA, I'm sure that you can you can feel a little of that. We are ready to open the largest university-operated hydrogen fueling station in America. That's a pretty big deal. And so this this will not only uh, this will not only be that accomplishment, but we're also laying a cornerstone of the university's sustainable energy and transportation technology program. We, we are opening what we consider a living laboratory for students, for faculty, for staff, for the community and business and industry to take advantage of, and they are absolutely going to take advantage of it. There is going to be a great deal of hands-on research and learning opportunities that emanate from this station. The facility will help prepare our students for the careers of today and tomorrow. It will help our faculty envision and conduct research on the transportation systems of the future, and it's going to be a, uh, a central part of the university's effort to combat the effects of climate change. And to boot, it's also going to generate hydrogen, and that will make it the newest station in the state's hydrogen infrastructure. So in the months ahead, any driver by the way, choose your car, which, which one you want to take with you today. Uh, you know, you can just put a sticker on it with your name, and then we'll make sure that you get to drive it away. That's not true. That's not true. But in the months ahead, if you have a car, any driver will be able to pull off the 10 or the 710, drive onto the university, and fuel up. And this station then is going to be open to the public. And notice I said fuel up, not gas up, right? Because with the help of stations like this, uh, gassing up with petroleum will become a thing of the past. I'm, I know our students and everyone concerned are eager to build that future. And I'm particularly pleased to make this event the center, the, the, the center of our investiture week. Right in the center of the week, we have this, this opening. The theme of this investiture week is engagement, service, and the public good. So our goal has been to highlight this theme through events, through actions, through through real progress toward that goal. Yesterday, we welcomed Billie Jean King to campus to break ground on a new tennis center for use by our students and our community. Later in the day, yesterday, labor leader Maria Elena de Razo was here for a discussion on income inequality, on the minimum wage, and the ways in which higher education is the remedy for those problems. Today, we're able to demonstrate one more important way in which we serve California by mitigating our environmental 
impact. So it's a great moment for celebration. The hydrogen fueling station puts us on the cutting edge toward a brighter future for all of us in all of the places in which we live and work. And I hope that you're as excited about it as we are here on campus. Thank you all so very much for joining us today. I look forward to seeing you back at Cal State LA again and again and again. Thank you. Thank you, President Covino. I'm sure you've all heard the expression, it takes a village. In the case of this facility, it took a worldwide effort. Many companies contributed to the design of the station. Some of the equipment and technology were custom ordered, and some traveled quite a distance to be used in the design. The station's electrolyzer was developed in Belgium and shipped to the Port of Los Angeles, after which it traveled up to 710 at 3 a.m. as a large of size. The buffer tank was provided by an Italian firm flown out of Europe to LAX. I would like to acknowledge the technical expertise and innovations of several companies, including Hydrogenics, Quantum Technologies, EPC, HydroPack, Broadlux, Favor, and General Physics. I also commend Chavin Controls, which accomplished the monumental feat of assembling and integrating the systems. And I would like to thank the late Herbert Burnett for his consulting expertise. The hydrogen facility was built almost entirely with external funding. We are grateful to the many donors who believed in and committed funds to the building of the station, including the Amundsen Foundation, the Automobile Club of Southern California, the Kenneth Brasher Trust, the California Air Resources Board, the Mobile Source Air Pollution Reduction Committee, Fran Morris Rossman and Richard Rossman, the South Coast Air Quality Management District, and the United States Department of Energy. Also, generous funding was provided by Cal State LA for the purchase of land and for the construction. You will hear from many of these donors later in the program. We thank you. We could not have done it without you. In addition to those who funded the facility construction, we received invaluable support from several automobile manufacturers. And you can see their cars here today. I would like to acknowledge the involvement of BMW, Daimler Mercedes, General Motors, Honda, Hyundai, and Toyota. And there are representatives from these organizations with us today, in addition to their fuel cell prototypes, which are on display behind me. These partnerships are key to making the California hydrogen infrastructure a reality and to making fuel cell vehicles a viable option for the public. Lastly, I would like to thank the Cal State LA project management team who guided the facility's development, including David Blackman, Virgil Seaman, Sarab Singh, former Associate Dean Don Maurizio, Warren Jacobs, the Office of University Development, and the Office of Graduate Studies and Research. These folks and others have gone above and beyond their efforts to see this project through to completion. In particular, I would like to give very special thanks and acknowledgement to Michael Dre, our hydrogen station manager, and to Blake Cordes, the station technician, for their exceptionally hard work completing the final stages of construction and preparation and making sure we were ready for today. Finally, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the work of two people from the California Air Resources Board, Gerhard Ostelik and Michael Kashuba. They met bi-weekly with the Cal State LA project management team for several years. Their advice and dedication helped tremendously in building this facility. I told you it took a worldwide village. If there's anyone I didn't acknowledge, well, I thank you too. <laughs> and now we'll, we'll hear from a few of our partners in this endeavor. First, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Steve Mazur. Steve is the principal automotive engineer at the Automotive Research Center of the Automobile Club of Southern California. Prior to joining the Automobile Club, Steve was an automotive test engineer at, at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, 
and a fuel systems development engineer at Ford Motor Company. Jeez. Good morning. I'm Steve Major, the Chief Automotive Engineer of the Automotive Research Center for the Automobile Firm in Southern California. On behalf of our CEO, Bob Gutierrez, and the Chairman of our Board, Tom McKernan, who is also a Cal State LA alumnus, I'd like to thank you for inviting us to join in this celebration. I want to start off and talk a little bit from my own personal experience what the value of a project like this can be to the students. When I was a high school senior here in Southern California, Reseda, a team from UCLA that just built a hydrogen fuel car using an internal combustion engine, brought that car as a demonstration to my high school. I was pretty good in math and science, but I didn't know what I was going to do. I saw that car and I said, that's it. I enrolled at UCLA, signed up to be an engineer, and got on the team that was campaigning that car. Eventually, my senior year, then the team that campaigned that hydrogen car, that won every competition you ever got into. Once I graduated, I started applying for jobs, got my first job as a fuel system engineer at Ford Motor Company. The manager who hired me flat out said, he said, we don't hire students from schools other than Michigan when they're first graduated, except you have this thing on your resume that says you've been working on this alternative fuel car and its, and its fuel system, so we thought we'd give it a try. So the project like this is a magnet for students to get them involved in automotive and engineering, and it's just great on our resumes to help them get jobs when they get into the real world. So we appreciate this effort. But this facility is really about the future of automotive transportation. I want to share a little history as to why a 114-year-old company like the Auto Club will be part of this celebration. Throughout the Auto Club's history, we've stayed informed about the new technologies in the automotive field so we can provide the best service to our members. That includes understanding alternative fuels and preparing to help members with their future purchasing decisions. As far back as the 1970s, the Auto Club had a fleet of Ford Rancheros and Chevrolet El Caminos that were powered by propane that provided petroleum gas. For the past several years, our Automotive Research Center has been testing alternative fuel and hybrid vehicles as they're introduced to the market and preparing an annual green car guide to provide our members and motors in general help in trying to purchase the various types of green cars that are on the market. Also, we're testing the capabilities of smart electric cars by putting them into use in light claims, things like providing jump starts or taking batteries or, or lock out when somebody locks their keys in the car, and have our insurance claims people drive those smart electric cars instead of their gasoline fuel cars to find out how those cars work in the hands of real people using them. And it, it's in the same spirit of research and information gathering that the Auto Club agreed to be a sponsor of this hydrogen vehicle fueling station at Cal State LA. It's helpful to have partners such as Cal State LA to help push the development of alternative fuels for vehicles forward into the future. We look forward to moving ahead with you to see how this station gets used and how this fuel in particular is used by motorists. The Auto Club wishes you the best in this endeavor. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Our next speaker is Greg Pettis. Greg wears two hats. He is chair of the Mobile Source Air Pollution Reduction Committee and is also a council member in the city of Cathedral City. Greg. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, President, for being able to be a speaker today. Uh, it's a pretty long title of an organization, so we're just going to say MSRC just because of the big us all day if I continue to, to give our title. We want to applaud Cal State LA for their efforts to improve air quality by opening this new hydrogen research facility and station. Zero emission vehicles like hydrogen fuel cell vehicles play a significant role in reducing our greenhouse gas and smog forming emissions. Because as you know, hydrogen vehicles produce virtually no tailpipe emissions. They'll be instrumental to achieving California's goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 80% by 2050. Governor Brown issued an executive order in 2012 calling for 1.5 million zero emission vehicles on California roadways by 2025. 
the infrastructure needs to be in place in order to make it easy for people to have those vehicles. And Cal State LA is going a great deal with this station in making sure that we're going to have that network. This facility is in a prime location close to several major freeways and just a few miles from downtown. This station is going to open up new options for people in the East LA area and downtown who for so long have only been in West LA that have had this opportunity. We're very happy to partner with Cal State LA on this station because this is the type of product project that embodies the MSRC mission to improve air quality for all Southern California. We provide clean transportation funding to projects from a $4 surcharge on every vehicle license fee. We get millions of dollars a year out of Southern California to local projects designed to reduce air pollution from mobile sources, just like this station. When we distribute these funds, we carefully consider the most cost-effective ways to reduce emissions to meet the local community's needs. That's what's most important to us, is to do the kinds of projects that local communities want to see accomplished. Because this station is open to the public, it's going to encourage businesses to expand their fleets, to get others to drive more hydrogen fuel vehicles, and possibly for some of our transit agencies, like the Sunline Transit Agency out in my area in the desert, we already have hydrogen fuel buses. But this will encourage Metro and some of those others to expand in that, that area as well. It's our desire to do as much as we can to help the United States in our goal for fuel independence and not dependent very long. Not only will this station give our give drivers greener fuel choice, but the research facility is going to give faculty and students a real world, hands on experience in how to develop more sustainably produced hydrogen and a more viable alternative fuel. MSRC is committed to continuing to partner with Cal State LA on projects like this. Now and in the future, uh, we will be there to provide funding. We look forward to more opportunities like this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dave. Next, I'd like to introduce Clark Parker, who is a governing board member of the South Coast Air Quality Management District. At AQMD, he chairs the Refinery Committee and also serves on the Finance, Legislative, Mobile Source, Technology, and Personnel Committees. He is the board appointee to the California Fuel Cell Partnership. Clark's previous career endeavors at Tidewater, Getty Oil, IBM, and Penport Financial led him to be the founder and CEO of Spectrum Surveillance Systems and Viewport Development Corporation. Clark? Good morning. Good morning. I think uh, it is very appropriate to, to state that I am here today representing not only uh, the AQMD board, but uh, to also state that I am also uh, on the executive committee, it's up of the Fuel Cell Partnership. Kathy, who is here with us today, who's the executive director, um, heads that wonderful board. Uh, we also uh, have just recently uh, been awarded funds in order to open up, hopefully by 2016, she's telling me, somewhere in the mid-50 uh, range of 50 stations throughout the, the states. And that's a great achievement. On behalf of both, both of these entities, the, the AQMD and the Fuel Cell Partnership, I want to convey AQMD's sincere congratulations for the opening of this important state-of-the-art facility, comprehensive zero-emission hydrogen transportation research, teaching, and technology advancement. As an early and continuing supporter of a full portfolio of alternative fuels that we do at AQMD, South Coast AQMD has long believed that advanced vehicles and advanced infrastructure must be deployed together for optimal reinforcement. So our board was very successful and interested in co-funding this project because it has been so carefully planned 
to embody that two fork approach. Advanced vehicles and advanced infrastructure. And because hydrogen fuel cell technology is such a transformative field of engineering and infrastructure, we believe that the learning curve to accomplish here will help shorten the curve of other potential adopters and greatly expand the impact of our joint work ethics. We have no time to waste in making this necessary transition to cleaner energy. It must be done now. This station is a clear example of that particular ethic. This year, commercial fuel cell electrical vehicles will be introduced in selected markets throughout the world, including Germany, Scandinavia, Japan, and certainly in California. More than anyone, we as stakeholders know that commercial success will demand a robust hydrogen refuel and network to support vehicle sales. Given the extended range of fuel cell vehicles, South Coast already has one of the most functional hydrogen fuels, fueling networks in the entire world. This Cal State LA station will provide superior fueling access to the core of metropolitan Los Angeles. It is close to all the major freeways and it's close to get to and in and out of it. I'd like to take this opportunity, as I stated that, to introduce one of my other board members who's here with me today, Michael Cacciotti, who's sitting here. Michael is the mayor of uh, South Pasadena, and he is the individual that at every one of our board meetings has an introdu introduction for us of telling us how he got from South Pasadena to Diamond Bar without using a vehicle. This is the uh, clerk, I want to tell you. For the last year, I've been riding my bike from South Pasadena, four miles north, by this facility to the Metrolink station to catch the train at 5.54. you got to get there at 5.50, always early. And I've been impatient. Let's get this thing built, Clark. <laughs> To us, HMD, another impressive aspect of this facility is that it will be a living laboratory that greatly supports a team of hydrogen focus, including academic, business, and public policy participants. Diverse and innovative co-funding partnership, local, federal, and international collaboration, and a research team of multiple science and engineering disciplines. South Coast AQMD believes that government has a strong and positive role to play in supporting the transition to near zero and zero emission energy solutions. That role is to team up with the job creating sectors of our economy. What better to do that than to team up with great universities such as that of Cal State University. That is exactly what this research facility is part for us to carry out. The infrastructure and energy decisions we make in the next few years will dramatically affect the quality of our lives for decades and generations to come. These decisions will affect the very length of our lives and those of our friends and loved ones. So we look forward to collaborating with you in this good and vital work effort. We join in celebrating today's step in this journey towards sustainability. 16 and a half million residents of this region who will benefit from more breathable air are depending on us. We are on the first step right here of getting it done. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Clark. I'd now like to introduce Jason Marcinkowski. He is a technology development manager at the U.S. Department of Energy. There he works in the fuel cell systems program, managing a portfolio of research and development activities conducted by national laboratories, industry, and academic programs. Most notably, he has managed projects estimating and projecting the cost of automotive fuel cell components, and he has worked on the formulation of the congressional budget for the fuel cell technologies program. Thank you, Dave. What a 
great turnout today. Um, not every day I get to see so many people in support of uh, the work we do at the Department of Energy and the work that California is doing. Um, on behalf of the U.S. Department of Energy, I want to congratulate the California State University of Los Angeles on reaching this milestone, deploying one of the first renewable hydrogen stations. I also want to commend the state of California for their pioneering advancements and untiring efforts to bring us to the zero carbon transportation sector. Cal State University is part of an award the Department of Energy announced last year providing funding for hydrogen station data collection. This station is a great example of our partnership with the state of California, who continues to invest in the hydrogen infrastructure rollout and widespread commercialization of fuel cell vehicles. This station can refill a car just as fast as a gasoline station, and the cars can go just as far, just as fast, but without the health risks of air pollution and with renewable energy that is sourced in the United States. The station, this station is commissioned at the perfect location. Cal State University has trained the next generation of engineers who will be responsible for replicating and improving this technology to grow and expand hydrogen infrastructure through California and the United States. Education is a key component to our success. The students we train today are the ones that are going to make it happen in 2020 and in 2050. And I want to emphasize the President's climate action plan that calls for 80% greenhouse gas emissions reduction by 2050. This station is also being commissioned with perfect timing, ready for the 2015 rollout of fuel cell electric vehicles. Last year, many auto manufacturers announced fuel cell electric vehicle commercialization plans. Toyota, Nissan, Hyundai, General Motors, Honda, Daimler, Mercedes, and Ford are all committed to putting fuel cell electric vehicles on the road. There has been tremendous momentum in the wake of these announcements, especially in California. Most of you know about California's $100 million investment in hydrogen stations. Last week, the CEC announced that it would award 46.5 six million for 28 stations. These awards include six 100% renewable energy refueling stations that will add 13 new locations in Northern California, 15 in Southern California. Strategically located to create the refueling network. Last week, the CEC also announced that California joined the H2 USA, a public-private partnership led by the Department of Energy. Launched in May 2013, H2 USA's goal is to promote the widespread commercialization of fuel cell vehicles and to address the challenge of hydrogen infrastructure. H2USA currently consists of 32 participants, including automakers, state governments, academic institutions, and national laboratories. We are pleased to add the state of California to this list and look forward to collaborating with you even more closely. The DOE continues to invest in overcoming the challenges of hydrogen infrastructure, and we had our own announcement last week. The Energy Department recently announced the launch of a new project led by our National Renewable Energy Laboratory, San Diego National Laboratory, to support H2USA. The hydrogen fueling infrastructure, research, and station technology project, H2 First, is designed to reduce the cost of time in station construction, increase station availability, and improving reliability by creating opportunities for industry partners to pull knowledge and resources. Overcome technical hurdles. The project was established by DOE's Fuel Cell Technologies Office and Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, drawing on existing and emerging emerging core capabilities of the national labs. Hydrogen and fuel cells are critical components of the Energy Department's portfolio. DOE is investing $100 million per year in research and development to advance hydrogen and fuel cell technologies. We've made great progress. We've reduced the cost of fuel cells by more than 50% since 2006, 30% since 2008. We've achieved more than five-fold reduction in platinum content fuel cells. Along with our funding partners in California, we supported the development of the world's first tri-generation hydrogen energy station that provides high-value transportation fuel to the public, hydrogen, and electric power to the facility, using otherwise waste gas from the Orange County Sanitation District's wastewater treatment plant in Fountain Valley, California. In 
In our learning demonstration, 180 fuel cell electric vehicles traveled 3.6 million miles. Fuel cell efficiency was demonstrated at 59%, twice that of today's gasoline engines. The results of this technology validation project, and others like the one being commissioned today, are a critical part of our research and development. By bringing this data back to the lab room in Riesling, once here at Cal State University, we learned from our real world experience to continue to fine tune these technologies to be in our world. Now is an extremely critical time for hydrogen infrastructure. And California is at the forefront. The cars are coming, and we need to get the infrastructure right. If we don't, we'll be made or set. Our ultimate goal for the fuel cell electric vehicles and hydrogen is to bring renewable energy to vehicles, resulting in zero carbon transportation sector, providing the mobility and range we're accustomed to in the United States. We've seen tremendous progress in just the last few years. There's no chicken and egg problem. We have stations opening right here, and the cars are coming. Congratulations to Cal State University. Our last speaker today is Richard Corey. He is the Executive Director of the California Air Resources Board. Richard has 28 years of professional experience in the field of air pollution. At the Air Resources Board, Richard leads a team of over 1,200 people who are responsible for a range of programs, including those concerning fuels, climate, incentives, and air toxics. In addition, Richard oversees the board's administrative services and information technology operations. Good morning. It's, it's really an honor to be part of this real, very important event. I'm very excited about it. But I know that events like this, this little facility, doesn't happen by accident. And I know that uh, President Kobina and Dean Allen touched on this, but it's really built on commitment, dedication, leadership, and vision of a number of folks for, for many periods of time, for a long extended period of time. And I was uh, really touched by the uh, story of Dr. Taro, and we just want to recognize that. In California, we know that to get to our to get to clean air, clean healthy air quality, and to meet our climate goals, it's going to take zero emission vehicles. There's no other way to look at it. That's what that's the destination, and we're all part of that amazing transition that's going to play out over a short period of time. You guys are all part of this. And this is an under, another indicator of an important marker as we move through this transition. And, and, and to be part of it, to me, is, is just, it's just an exciting, it's an exciting time to be, uh, to be here. I know that the uh, facility itself, the hydrogen aspect, is another fact, another significant milestone in terms of the uh, marker of additional you know, growing network of hydrogen stations in the state of California. And it sends an important signal. It signals this, signal to automobile manufacturers. Develop and bring zero emission vehicles to California. There's a market. California rewards innovation. Bring battery electric vehicles. Bring fuel cell vehicles. We're already demonstrating the uptake of these vehicles. There's a commitment and a recognition of an important role that they play. Bring them on. We also know that by virtue of connecting the hydrogen facility with the, with the research institution, is it, it's, a, it's a really the perfect marriage because not only does it contribute to the, the uh, important growing network, it also is going to be the incubator for developing the next generation of scientists, engineers, entrepreneurs, investors. That I'm mean, equally excited about, and I'm hoping that we get a few of them to work for us. So, talk to me afterwards. So in closing, I'm just very excited to be part of this, and really is a, uh, a significant occasion, and congratulations. Thank you, Richard.
The opening of this station demonstrates the university's commitment to providing opportunities for students and faculty to pursue their interest in renewable energy, alternative fuels, and clean transportation technology. These are hallmark technical areas for Los Angeles and California, as you've heard. Last week, the CEC announced the building of 40 more hydrogen stations in California. And we are positioned to provide the workforce and the workforce development for the state's hydrogen economy. We opened this facility today, but the research efforts that the hydrogen facility makes possible are already underway. We are partnering with the U.S. Department of Energy to evaluate the station's performance and the pathways to save energy in producing and dispensing hydrogen. We are funded by the National Science Foundation to conduct studies in assuring hydrogen purity. The CEC provided funding for this station, as well as for Cal State LA to partner with other agencies, as you've heard today, in the development of alternative fuels and advanced transportation technologies. It is with great pride that we open the Cal State LA Hydrogen Research and Fueling Facility. And now for the ribbon cutting, I invite the platform party to step behind the ribbon. our program except for some photos. I invite you to tour the hydrogen facility and to look over the fuel cell vehicles and then to join us for an open house across the street where you can find refreshments and you can talk with our faculty and students about their innovative projects, many of them transportation related that are on display across the street. Thank you all for coming.